Before we begin our celebration, just a reminder that uh, restrooms, if you need to use them, are over in Loyola Hall, and, at this, and there will be a reception in Loyola Hall afterwards, to which all are invited. At this time, please check your cell phones and make sure that they are silenced. And as we make our final preparations for the liturgy to begin, I invite you to simply be in a place of quiet and of peace. Thank you.
On the day of his baptism, Pierre was welcomed into the church, given new life in Christ, and clothed with a garment of salvation. Today, we greet the body of our brother and surround him with the church's prayer. We commend him to the mercy of God and pray that the promise made to him in baptism will be fulfilled. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty God, that the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Pierre Dumaine, to whom you committed the care of your family, may, with the manifold fruit of his labors, enter into the eternal gladness of his Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, heard a voice from heaven say, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, said the spirit, let them find rest from their labors for their works accompany them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Father, I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
religion is basically about stories. Stories that provide meaning, purpose, and a sense of belonging. All religious traditions have rituals that help people to cope with the stark but inevitable reality of death. Although death impacts each of us in a very personal and individual way, rituals bring people together as a community, a community of shared thought and feeling to support one another. Our Catholic ritual is quite simple in structure. We gather to tell stories and share a meal. The stories from the sacred scriptures place recent events within a wider narrative that hopefully provides a fuller sense of meaning. The meal, like all meals, nourishes us to continue life's journey. We take the journey because we believe that the story is true and the story is transformative. On the subject of story, I once accompanied Bishop Dumain to the funeral of a religious priest that we both knew and admired. Presiding at the liturgy, the bishop was seated in an impromptu elevated chair at the back of the sanctuary. The bishop was seated under the three containers of the sacred oils that were mounted on the wall behind us. I had a sense that he was not terribly pleased by the location. The homilist had been at his task for an extended time. When I began to hear measured breathing, not a good sign. Then the bishop leaned over toward me and he whispered, can you reach those oils? <laughs> Probably. Why? If this guy tells one more story, I want you to get up, get the oil of the sick, and give either me or him the last rites. <laughs> At the conclusion of the Mass, the bishop stood to make some concluding remarks to the assembly. And he began with the sentence, all that could be said has been said. <laughs> the 
With that in mind, I promise brevity. <laughs> In his typical minimalist fashion, Bishop Dumaine chose just four sentences to capture the essence of the revealed story for this liturgy. One from the book of Revelation, the first reading, chapter 14, verse 13. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Blessed are the dead who from now on die in the Lord. Yes, says the Spirit, they will rest from their labors, for their deeds follow them. The deeds refer to the choice of following Jesus in the midst of persecution. That loyalty will have its reward. The book of Revelation, at times called crisis literature, Jesus is seen as the sole focus of hope in the midst of and through whatever crisis the present age throws at us. From the fourth gospel, these three sentences in the public ministry of Jesus right before his arrest in the garden. Jesus says, Father, the world does not know you, but I know you, and these know you, and know that you have sent me. I have made your name known to them, and I will make it known, so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. A major theme of the fourth gospel, Christ, the revealer of God. Now these few sentences may well provide the basic rationale for a ministry of service undertaken by the first bishop of San Jose in 1981. For 18 years, he labored to make the name of the Lord known in a culture did not, that did not always know or understand his mission. The bishop may have well had his own questions about the mission. I venture to say that if he had read in the business section of the San Francisco Chronicle an advertisement in 1980 for a new position in San Jose for the chief executive officer of a new Catholic diocese, he would have quickly turned to the sports page or the book reviews. He was not a careerist. And despite exceptional talents, he was not given to self-promotion. He had great respect for the tradition of the church as he understood it. But he did not fear innovation or change to make the name of the Lord known. He enhanced the role of women, his fluency in Spanish proved a real asset, and he always kept a careful eye 
on a ministry to the poor. His Episcopal motto, Gaudium et Spes, from the document of the church in the modern world, in fact set a tone. People quickly recognized that he had an instinctual aversion to rigid ideological positions that he frequently addressed with calculated indifference or at times surgical humor. <laughs> Beginning a new diocese was not an easy task. Making the Lord's name in our time and in our place has never been a simple endeavor. Dumaine knew from the beginning that this was not going to be a one-man show. Micromanagement was not part of his DNA. He trusted those around him, and they reciprocated. committed and diverse circle of friends who served him well at many different levels. Sister Claude may well have originated the role of consigliere, wise pastors always listen to Sister Claude because she could make their case in diplomatic but relentless fashion. With the declining health of the bishop, Monsignor Mike Mitchell continued to provide generous and competent care as he had for decades. Such loyalty says much on both sides of the equation. And that type of attention and devotion in fact enables people to die in the Lord and hopefully their deeds will follow them as the Spirit again says yes and now provides rest from their labors. The name of the Lord has always been made known by labors such as these. So it is that this community today this community of memory will continue to make the name of the Lord known with joy and with hope because Gaudium et Spes became more than a motto. It became a way of life.
With faith and hope in our loving God, we present our petitions to our Heavenly Father. In the spirit of Bishop Humane's Episcopal motto, may the Church of San Jose always be a sign of joy and hope, especially for those most in need. Que la Iglesia siempre sea signo de gozo y esperanza. Let us pray to the Lord. In gratitude for Bishop Dumaine's commitment to the spirit of Vatican II by promoting openness and communication through the introduction of technology in education and pastoral ministry, que la Iglesia siempre encuentre maneras nuevas para comunicarse con el mundo, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for educators, universities, centers of pastoral formation, that they may prepare men and women committed to contribute to the good of communities and the church. Damos gracias por el don de la educación y formación que tanto apoyó Monseñor Dumaine. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for men and women who serve the church, may their generosity and profound love bring the good news of the gospel to everyone. Que todo ministro de la iglesia proclame el evangelio con gozo y esperanza. Let us pray to the Lord. For Bishop Dumaine's family, so deeply rooted in the heritage of his beloved land of Kentucky. May they be greatly consoled by the witness of his life among us. Que nuestro agradecimiento consuele a su familia y todos que lo quisieron en vida. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who cared for him with such tenderness and devotion, among them, Karen, Imori, Patricia, Mele, that they may reap the rewards of their good works. Que sean bendecidos todos y todas aquellos que se entregan al cuidado de los demás. Let us pray to the Lord. For Bishop Dumaine, in gratitude for his life and many contributions, especially his promotion of the laity and women in leadership positions. We rejoice that he now enjoys the full embrace of God's love in the company of all the saints. Que él se encuentre en el abrazo gozoso de Dios y, y sus seres queridos. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all of us who grieve, that our faith in the resurrection may join us together in consolation and hope. Que el consuelo del Señor sea nuestro gozo y esperanza. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for your many blessings. We thank you for the life, the vocation, the ministry, of Bishop Pierre Dumaine, we ask that you give him rest from his labors. We ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We humbly beseech your boundless mercy, Lord, that this sacrifice which your departed servant, Bishop Dumain, while in the body offered to your majesty for the salvation of the faithful, may now bring him to your pardon. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. To him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, 
and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the death of the Lord until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with blessed Mary, the mother of God, with St. Joseph, his spouse, and with all the saints, in the, on their constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. And all the clergy and the entire people who came for your own. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to, to you at their passing from this life, remember your servant Pierre, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united to your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and trans transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away the tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, 
In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by his divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will Lord, we believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world, and I will Soy el pan de vida, a mi venga no tendrán hambre, en mi crea no tendrán sed, nadie viene a mí si mi padre no lo atrae. Yo lo 
Let us pray. May your merciful kindness, which we have implored, O Lord, benefit the soul of your departed servant, Bishop Pierre Dumain, that by these sacrificial gifts he may know the eternal company of Christ in whom he hoped and whom he preached. 
who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we come now to the conclusion of this lovely liturgy of thanksgiving to God for the life and the ministry of Bishop Pierre, I want to, if I may, extend our sympathy to Pierre's cousin Nancy to assure her our prayers today and in the future. I also extend that same sympathy to Monsignor Mitchell over here, Mitch. Thank you, I know I don't have to thank you, but thank you for your great commitment throughout the many years to Bishop Pierre. I know he depended on you and looked greatly and thankfully upon your friendship and ministry to him. There are others here, Maureen, his assistant, Linda, all kinds of people. Thank you for all that you did for him. I have known Pierre for over 50 years, and I'm somewhat sane still. Huh? I knew him in San Francisco when I came from Ireland in 1970, but I really got to know him when I came to, to San Jose as the coadjutor in 1988. He was always very kind to me, very patient uh, with me. He used to refer to me as his unworthy successor. Now, I took it as a joke, but I'm not quite sure that he, actually, that he actually meant it that way. I would ask from time to time for advice. He would give it. Sometimes I did not follow it. Unfortunately, he was always correct, and I was absolutely wrong. But he never threw it in my face, again, kind and and compassionate and patient. I've told the story a zillion times. I know the priests have heard it often, but I remember one time at the dining room table at the residence, I don't know how it came out, I was there for lunch with them, and I said to him, I said, Pierre, you know, everybody will remember the first bishop of San Jose and the last bishop of San Jose but no one will remember the second Bishop of San Jose. <laughs> now, his degree was in education, remember? Without missing a beat, he said, oh no, PJ, he said, remember, it is the number two pencil that's the most important. <laughs> As Monsignor Pat said, there were some challenges during his time here, the Loma Prieta earthquake, the collapse of St. Uh, Joseph Seminary, the revamping of this beautiful cathedral. Thank you, Pierre, for doing that. And there were other things that he had to deal with as well. But he dealt with them with great courage and valor. Valor. 
a couple of months ago, at least I think it was a couple of months ago, I was visiting with him and he was having a rather good day. And he turned to me and he said, PJ, he says in a couple of months there's going to be two uh, auxiliary, or, uh, retired bishops in San Jose. And I said, yes, he said, uh, one of us is going to have to move on. <laughs> I looked at him and I said, one of us? <laughs> he laughed. Great sense of humor. I'm going to miss Pierre. I already miss him. In the last several years, it has been difficult as he surrendered himself to his God. It was painful for him and for those who loved him. And in a sense, it was a kind of a, kind of a long goodbye. But knowing Pierre right now, he's looking at his watch or whatever they have in heaven, and he's saying, for God's sake, PJ, move on. <laughs> I have people to see and places to go. So we will move on, but not before I give thanks to God for allowing him, allowing Pierre to touch our lives because we have been forever ever changed. So I ask the Lord now to, to take him, bring him home, and reward him for his great, great goodness. Before we go our separate ways, let us now take leave of our brother Pierre. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. to his Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Pierre in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon your servant Pierre in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us now and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Indeed, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Amen. Thank you. 